Welcome. Today we are going to take a look at uh, how we can effectively use uh, and start up uh, a wonderful tool that our district has made available uh, for um, all teachers and all students uh, known as WebEx. Uh, this is a really great opportunity if we are ever in a position where a student needs to connect remotely into our classrooms because they may be gone for an extended period of time, uh, or we may be gone ourselves for an extended period of time. If we move uh, ever move to a position where we need to be ready for distance learning, uh, this is a really wonderful tool. It's ready-made. It's one of the leading tools, in fact, uh, in terms of um, connecting virtually through uh, discussions and through screen sharing. Uh, WebEx is a really, really powerful tool. Uh, and so we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to um, be ready to use this and have the expertise you need. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do uh, is understand there's two different products that we're possibly talking about here. There's WebEx Teams, uh, and WebEx Teams, if you look down at the bottom of my dock, is this kind of multicolored ring. Uh, and WebEx Teams is a great chat app uh, where you can set up teams uh, with teachers or student groups uh, and to be kind of in constant contact in, uh, in, in a chat atmosphere. Uh, the WebEx product that we're going to look at, their, their main product, uh, is really how can we have a video conference? Uh, what do we need to do and make sure that we have available uh, if a student needs uh, some distance learning uh, or if we need to prepare, if we need to be prepared for distance learning uh, and facilitating that ourselves? So you're going to want to make sure that you have the most recent uh, version of um, WebEx, uh, and the easiest way is to uh, start your manager app down on the bottom, uh, and then go up to self-service and click My Apps. When you do that, you're going to have all of these options uh, in terms of um, apps that are available. Uh, and if you quickly do a search for WebEx, you're really going to want to make sure you have the Cisco WebEx Meetings app. You'll see that I have all three of these things, and if there was a need for an update, you could update that. But for our purposes, just make sure that you have Cisco WebEx Meetings uh, downloaded from Manager onto your computer, which quite likely you already do. Uh, you'll know you have it when you click the launch pad, uh, and you can just see that these tools are right here. Uh, and so we're going to actually start Cisco WebEx Meetings uh, while we're taking a look at this tool. Uh, and to sign in, uh, there's simply your district credentials. Uh, and if you uh, need to reset your password, you can do a, a password reset request through Cisco WebEx, uh, and they'll be able to get you logged in. So it's really simple and straightforward, really, once you uh, get to this point. We don't want to make it too uh, crazy uh, complicated, and uh, Cisco WebEx has done a really great job uh, of helping us out with that. So there are uh, some fancy features where you could schedule a meeting, uh, and if you were to click schedule, then it would go through your Outlook, and it would create uh, a link and a button that you send out to people with your room number and uh, how to connect. And uh, But really, uh, if you're in a position where a student needs these resources and you are going to uh, broadcast from class, uh, it's as simple as setting your laptop up uh, and um, or your iPad, uh, and using Cisco WebEx to start a meeting. And then the student would simply log in. Let's take a look at what that's going to look like. I'm already logged in. You can see Christopher Barrickmo. My particular room, and this is uh, a key um, a key part of this, uh, everybody has their own personal room within our district. Uh, you could think of it as your classroom, uh, but you're going to have one personal room uh, that people are logging into to get whatever information needs to be shared. Uh, and I'll show you what you can do to share that information. So we're going to start a meeting just by clicking start a meeting. Uh, and it's showing you we're going into Christopher Brickmo's personal room. I've got multiple multiple screen things going. So this, uh, this is going to be new. Um, but you can use computer for audio. Uh, and you can mute yourself. You can stop your video. Uh, but I'll show you what this looks and sounds like. Hopefully we won't get too, uh, too much crazy feedback here. Um, tucked behind me down in this corner is uh, what you would see on Cisco WebEx. You'll also notice it just says waiting for other people to join. Uh, 
Uh, and this is the important part. If you started your meeting, you can click on this little info icon in the top left corner, and you can see all of the information that you would need to provide to your students. So you can see that this is my personal room. My particular address that students can type in uh, is displayed, https colon slash slash smsd.webex.com slash meet slash Christopher Barikmo. My meeting number is right here. Uh, and the access code is also here. So if they need to call in uh, and they don't have access to uh, internet or a computer to do this, they can still participate in the Cisco WebEx meeting by phone. Now, they won't necessarily see what you might share virtually, but at least they can hear uh, and be a part of this. So uh, imagine if you know somebody's internet isn't working, but their cell phone is, they can still connect to Cisco WebEx uh, in this way. Uh, and there's the toll-free number. There's other global call-in numbers. Uh, there's a number uh, for um, you know lots of different uh, pieces. But really, uh, the one that, that is for your room that's shown is, is going to be the best. And then the access code, that's going to be uh, how they get into the meeting itself. So once we have this, this is now kind of our, our platform here. Uh, and you have a number of commands down at the bottom. Uh, if you wanted to mute yourself uh, and um, maybe there was a, a video that you were sharing or you wanted to pause whatever the discussion was, uh, you can mute yourself. Um, you can, let's see if I can move this here. You can actually stop your video. Uh, and so if we stop my video, um, you can see that that goes away down here in this corner. If they, if you just want to talk and you just want to be able to see uh, what's going on, you can stop your video. You'll notice this is still going because this is through Screencastify. So if you were doing your WebEx meeting and you push stop video, it would be gone. You wouldn't be seeing this here. Uh, but if we start that video up again, you'll see it takes a little bit to connect and now we're back. Uh, this, If you want to record this, uh, meeting. And if you want to use this to be able to share uh, with those of your students who are not able to participate, you can use the recorder button uh, and record uh, exactly what your WebEx meeting uh, was, uh, was what was going on in that WebEx meeting. Uh, you can see a list of the participants. You'll see that we have no participants. I am the host, uh, but your student list would be uh, right here. So you can hide that by clicking that over. Uh, if you want to, uh, let's say, share resources, uh, and so uh, we want to, let's, uh, I'm going to use my Drive account, uh, and if I use my uh, Drive account, I can pull up a resource uh, for everybody to see. Um, let's switch to my school district one. Uh, and I'm just going to pull up a particular resource uh, that maybe I'm wanting to share with everybody. It's a, a presentation that I might be using in class, and so that student that might be gone or students who are gone uh, will be able to um, see these resources. Uh, I'll use uh, my Thinking Maths presentation, uh, which, uh, side note and plug, uh, will be a session uh, in our Summer Impact Institute that the district is putting together. Uh, this will be a presentation about linking uh, literacy and uh, thinking uh, and using the tools and thinking maps. Uh, so once we get this uh, pulled up, it's going to be important that you have that kind of available uh, in the background because you're going to tell screen, uh, you're going to tell WebEx what resource you're going to share uh, with everybody through your uh, conference on WebEx. So we're going to just bring up thinking maps across the curriculum uh, because we're going to want to share uh, some of those resources. And the internet's a little bit slow probably today, uh, but now we'll go back. Uh, to this uh, particular screen. And if you look, this is again the share content. So we're going to click share content. Uh, and right now I'm going to share my Google Chrome. It shows you all of the different tools that are open. Uh, and I could share the screen with people, uh, but I want to share Google Chrome, which is what I just showed you uh, from the background. Uh, and we're waiting for uh, this Thinking Maps piece to uh, start up. Uh, but whatever you would have on here is what you would then be sharing. So let's say I'm going to share, we'll try and get one started uh, that you might be able to see. 
So we want to share uh, this Thinking Maps uh, PDF. We could uh, simply start that up. We could start this one up. And whatever we see on our screen is exactly what students are seeing on their screen because we're sharing this uh, via WebEx. Uh, and if you look, you see here it says you're sharing Google Chrome. And now you have a number of different tools at the top. You could um, annotate uh, as you're sharing. So if you're talking about the thinking maps and you want to annotate that, uh, you can annotate that. Uh, you can um, uh, add chat. Uh, there's a number of features that you could add over here. Uh, but really, from a basic standpoint, uh, you can do a whole lot of different things from this uh, share menu. We can use the tools over here to draw our boxes. We can uh, change colors to say, well, this is the assignment that's going to be due next week. Uh, this is the assignment that's going to be due this week. Uh, we have all of those different tools that are very familiar to us uh, already uh, on the left-hand toolbar when we're sharing our screen. Uh, and so if you want to capture that screen to the clipboard, you want to save that to be able to share, um, you can. Uh, this is going to be something as simple as capturing, click the capture screen to clipboard, uh, and now it's saved to your clipboard to be able to share. Uh, there's lots of different tools. You can use the pointer. So if you want to uh, instead uh, use the pointer to show different parts, you can add text to uh, a particular piece that you want to share with folks. Uh, again, you can use all of the tools that we are familiar with in our basic drawing apps. Now, to then stop uh, sharing your screen, uh, you find your cursor back up to the top. We go back to our pointer, uh, and now we can just click Stop Sharing. And now we're back into the Cisco WebEx uh, portion. Now, let's say you wanted to do a number of other tools that are part of this. You could add uh, a chat feature. Uh, and you could send it to everybody in the group. So um, perhaps you're hosting a, a virtual class and it is, uh, uh, please ask your burning questions in the chat. We will get through those as we can. And so now it shows up in the chat and anybody can add to that chat. So if you're sharing something or if you're doing your particular uh, work within WebEx, now you can look at this chat screen over here uh, and begin to answer questions for students. There's also a number of features here uh, where if you need to send the link to somebody for the meeting, you can. Uh, if you uh, need to uh, invite and remind somebody about the meeting because they're not there, you can. Uh, one of my favorites uh, is this polling feature. Uh, so let's say we're going to end this chat, uh, and so we're not going to confuse us. We're just going to use one camera, uh, and we're going to do a poll. Uh, we, we want to ask some questions. Uh, you would click start a new question right here. Uh, you could um, change your question type. Uh, this is multiple choice. Uh, this would be... Um, you know, to edit the question, you could delete the question. Uh, and so we're going to start with this one. Uh, what is the main character's um, key decision in this chapter? And now you have this particular question that people uh, can answer. Uh, you could um, create a multiple choice question. Um, he was, uh, and maybe you want to add another one. Uh, she was, they were, you know, whatever the question is. Uh, and then if you want to record their individual responses, you can click down here and record individual responses, and then you can open up the poll. Uh, and so at this point, anybody who's in the conference would have this question. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, what the answers are, uh, and you can sh see what their uh, particular uh, percentage is among the whole. Uh, and you can see it's open for a five-minute poll. Uh, you could, once it's done uh, and you've had some responses and you've maybe used this as a formative assessment, you can just simply click close poll. Uh, you can share the individual. You can share the results with attendees. Just you can share the poll results with them to see how everybody responded. Uh, I wouldn't say share share individual results. 
just simply because that's not something maybe you want everybody to see how everybody responded. Uh, and then you can just click apply. Once you click apply, uh, it will share those results uh, with everybody uh, within that. You can close that back out. Whenever you want to do another one, you can just simply add another chat. If you want to do another chat, uh, you want to see that window again. Uh, or if you want to do another polling, you can do another poll. Um, there's lots of different things uh, that you can do within this polling feature that we would normally do in instruction anyways. So there's a number of other tools that I pointed out over here. Uh, once you uh, end the meeting, uh, let's say we're recording this meeting uh, and it's connecting into the recording. Okay, we're recording the meeting uh, and now we're gonna end the meeting. When we hit end, you wanna end the meeting for all participants and then you can just click end meeting. Uh, at that point, it takes you back to really what you were already doing. You're now disconnected from Cisco WebEx in that live meeting, uh, but this gives us at least a place to start uh, in terms of using this tool for students that may need uh, help with distance learning through Cisco WebEx, uh, or if we're in a position where we need to uh, conduct distance learning ourselves uh, for whatever reason that might be. Look to our next set of videos for some uh, more tips, tricks, and tools uh, to using Cisco WebEx uh, as a way to stay connected uh, in lots of different scenarios uh, for our classrooms.